Today I want to talk about the intersection of two of my favourite things, music and design. Let's critique some album art. Welcome to another album art critique video. I've come to really love making these because it is that combination of my two passions, like I said. These videos are a chance for me to talk about some designs and also show you a few recent additions to my record collection, which you can see sitting behind me here. So I've got four records to talk about today and let's dive into it. First up is a record that you would have seen in my last weekly vlog if you watched that. It is Pretty Odd by Panic at the Disco. This is an album that came out when I was in university and I have loved this album ever since and I knew it was one I wanted to own on vinyl. I'm very picky when it comes to what albums I want to own as a record rather than just listen to digitally. I think it has to be an album that you like listening to in full and some albums, the sound of them you can just imagine would sound amazing on vinyl and Pretty Odd is definitely one of them and if you've heard it then you'll know what I mean. Now as someone who was a fan of album art, records are amazing because you get to see the album art at a much larger size than you do when it's just a CD or just in that little square that you see in Spotify or iTunes. I never realised before how incredibly detailed this album art is. It's got this beautiful texture to it. It looks like a mixture of a textile and a wood printed sign, which I think is really cool. There's a lot of illustration work gone into this. This is not my usual style when it comes to design. It's not normally the type of thing I'm attracted to, but I love this because it matches the music so well, because I do believe that album art should be a representation of the music that it is packaging, essentially. Something else I love about this record is the inside sleeve. It features all this amazing hand-drawn typography. They could have just written it in a font like they did on the back of the album cover, but instead they chose to put the extra effort in it and go this hand-drawn route. I like that they've just done this in one colour, black, on a light background, because I feel like adding lots of colour to this would have felt overboard and might have clashed a bit with the earthy tones of the cover, so I think this was a good choice. Next up, one I can't believe that I haven't talked about yet in an album art design video. This is Bring Me The Horizons Live at Royal Albert Hall album. So what is incredibly special about this record is that I was there for the recording of it. They did this charity show to benefit the Teenage Cancer Trust at the Royal Albert Hall here in London and uh, I managed to get tickets to go along. They were very sought after as you can imagine, so I was very pleased with myself. Also because I pre-ordered this and it was like a fundraiser for the Teenage Cancer Trust, my name is printed on inside the album, which is very special. Bring Me The Horizon's latest full-length album, That's The Spirit, is one that I talked about in my first album art critique video. And what I love about this design is that they've taken elements of that artwork and brought it in here as like uh, an evolving of it, I suppose. Wait, evolution, that's the word. So on the inside of That's The Spirit, there was this beautiful, colorful marble pattern. And that is what you can see as the outline here, just as That's The Spirit does, this album has some beautiful typography to it. And I also really like how they've included live photos from the event on the inside because this is a live album. So it's nice to have the visual memories of that event and also the audio ones. Next up is the debut album from The Gospel Youth. This is Always Lose. Now I was already really excited about this album because I've watched this band grow over the past like year and a half and it's really exciting that they've now got a full length album out. But when I saw the artwork and my jaw dropped, I just think that this is amazing. I love this image. I'm not entirely sure how they made it, which I like. I like having that bit of confusion there. It definitely looks like it's a combination of a photograph with visual effects because I think the fire is real. I do think that was actually on fire, but this rain here was added in obviously afterwards. And then on the back of the album, we have the umbrella all burnt out uh, with the fire extinguished, which I think is a really cool connection between the front and the back. The colors are really nice on this. Blue and yellow are obviously contrasting colors. And so this was a really nice choice for the image. I like too how they've put yellow on the spine of the record. The lyric sheet from this album is nice. It's very simple, but I like that. I like that they didn't try to go overboard and bring the umbrella in too much on the inside. They've just used the same colors to bring that connection. And the back has this nice little icon and some bright yellow. I just have to show you the record itself with this too, because it's very cool. Check that out. Yellow and blue splatter. Yes. All in all, this is a really solid debut album cover design and it makes me excited to see what their albums look like in the future because I feel like this will be a band that always does great artwork. So, Gospel Youth, I have high expectations for you. Last but definitely not least is an album that is looking like it might potentially be my favourite album of the year, but I don't want to call it yet because we are only halfway through the year, so, you know, who knows what's going to come out. This is you're not as blank as you think by Sorority Noise. This album features a beautiful, really strong image on the front that was taken at dusk. I just think it's gorgeous. 
But my favorite part of it is their typography. They've chosen to do this typography that really looks like it is actual text that has been stolen. I love the intersection of digital and uh, real world like analog design techniques. And so I think it's pretty cool to bring in something like this that I've not really seen anyone do before in album art especially. I really admire the dedication that they haven't just done this for the title as well. They've actually put all of the track listing in this same sewn technique, which I love. I like the fact that you can see the shadows on this and it kind of feels like this photo of the track listings was taken at the same time of day as the dusk photo on the front, you know, with the long shadows. So that's a really nice connection there. And obviously the color has been chosen because it features in the sun rays on the front as well. I will say that the typography on the interior of this album could have used some work. Uh, it all just feels a little bit too tight, like the type is going to fall off the side of the page. And I think it might have been better to instead uh, decrease these margins in the middle um, or even use a, a slightly smaller font just to be able to get more space at the top and bottom. And that, my friends, is a look at some recent additions to my record collection and my thoughts on their artwork. I hope you enjoy watching these videos. Please give it a thumbs up if you do. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this album art too. So if you want to share your opinion and your take on it, then please leave your thoughts down below in the comments. If you are new to my channel, then welcome. And I hope you like what you saw and want to stick around for more. I make new videos about design every Saturday and then vlogs of my life as a designer in London every Tuesday. So hit subscribe and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye.